I'm just going to talk just about one thing, really, which is about responsive design that we've been working with for a couple of years now, and it's just kind of some of the things that I've learned from that along the process. Over the past two years, an increasing number of people are coming to our site using tablets and mobiles. So that has a big impact on how we tell our stories, um, because we can't serve a shonky experience up to half our audience, essentially. We've got to um, uh, serve them very well. And so that led us to working uh, with responsive design, which is essentially, many of you will know, um, using one code base to create content that appears on different, in different screen sizes. But you're not creating different versions. Essentially, it's the same version, although it might appear differently on different devices. Um, I just have to say at this point that the BBC still ha has a two sites, has a desktop site and a responsive site, and soon the desktop site will be disappearing completely. So we're sort of responsive-ish at the moment, um, not entirely, but we're, we're following the, the main um, precepts of it. Anyway, so I picked this particular project, which you, I didn't put a link into just in case the internet didn't work, but you can look it up. It's a um, uh, series of refugee exodus. Um, because it was a tricky one. And even though we've been working with responsive design, you know, creating uh, the versions for uh, smaller devices, phones, small tablets, tab ordinary sized tablets, all the way up to desktop, um, it was uh, tricky because I think we came into it with some um, uh, preconceptions about the data. It's a really good data set from the UN which showed the origin and the destination of refugees from Syria since the start of the crisis. It's obviously a massive story and one that's really worth telling. Um, right. So what did we learn? So initially, um, we were trying to do an interactive map. We were trying to visualise the data, have some kind of uh, map that you could filter. But this just didn't work. And when we kind of boiled it down to, to, to what we wanted to do on, on mobiles. So we knocked a few ideas around for quite a long time. And eventually it came up with um, the one that you sort of saw before and all its different versions. And this just shows you a couple of iterations. I was very keen on arrows and, and, and clickable maps. And, but it didn't really work. We tried it in lots of different ways. It just didn't really work. Um, so we ended up with uh, ditching the map at the top and moving into something that was a bit more uh, uh, graphics based, so with, with bars that filled up. Um, so essentially, this sort of leads into kind of some of the main things which, which we've learned over the couple of years that we've been using responsive design and telling our stories across all these different devices. So the, the key thing for a journalist is, is to never lose sight of the story, is to never lose sight of the key content that you need to tell the story. You might lose interactivity, um, but you mustn't lose sight of your objectives and, and, and how you want to tell that story. Um, there's, so, so I suppose the narrative goes that, you know, you have to start with mobile first with responsive design. Well, that's sort of true. Actually, you have to start with all of them at the same time, really. But what you can't do so much, in my experience, and we have tried, I think, is to retrofit some lovely, big, glossy experience which you've laboured over on a desktop um, to down to a mobile and expect it to really work. So you have to consider from the outset all of the different ways in which you're going to render those graphics and display those graphics. Um, you might have to be more creative, I guess, with your, uh, with your design, instead of going into it with a sort of strongly held view about what you want to display. Um, and as a journalist, I think it's important to say that writing really pithy, simple information in, in, in small screen sizes is, is a really good discipline. It's kind of um, harking back to CFAX days, if you like. But if you can tell a story in, in a very short number of words, you know, 50 words, then that's good. And that, that works well across devices. It's not just something which is for mobile. Because to be honest, lots of people don't often want to read screeds of text on any device that they're using. So boiling the story down to its key components is essential. Um, right. I'll come to that one in a minute. Um, and the other thing is to leave, the, the big kind of thing, lesson that we've learned is to leave plenty of time for QAing all your work. Um, that's been, you know, a hard learned lesson, I think. And, and obviously, as a public service organisation, we have to support a huge number of browsers. So um, that can cause all sorts of issues. And so uh, for many of you, and if you're creating content, you may um, choose not to support various things like Explorer, but we have to. Okay, and finally, I'll leave you, this is a change of tack, 
but I'll just leave you with this as my kind of plea as a, as a journalist. It's the, it's the shark map test, which you might find quite useful. Um, this graphic I pulled off Twitter uh, a couple of months ago, and it always makes me laugh. And uh, so what it's telling us, essentially, is that shark attacks happen in areas that have a coastline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put anybody in a difficult situation who created this, but clearly it's, it's, it's quite funny. And it doesn't, and there is other information here, but that's not the thing that's visualised. The thing that you take away from it is that shark maps happen on where there's a coast. So you can use this as a quick test for your own work, and I urge you to do so, because it, may, it helps you to focus on the storytelling. Think, take a step back and see just exactly what are you telling people. Because if you're telling people the sort of metaphorical equivalent of that sharks live in the sea, then you're your visualisation isn't really working hard enough. It needs to have a story. It needs to tell some, somebody something they don't know. It needs to be news, in a sense. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>